this video's revision on um, energy stores uh, and transfers. So let's think about the energy stores that we know about to start off with. We know about kinetic energy. We know about gravitational potential. Chemical. Elastic. And thermal. So these are our five energy stores. So you also need to know... Uh, what do we mean by each of these things? So with kinetic, we are talking about something that is moving. So anything that is moving has some kinetic energy. Gravitational potential energy is about its position in a gravitational field. So its height is the main, the main thing. So if there's a change in the position of the gravitational field, then that's a change in gravitational potential energy. Chemical energy is, the st is uh, stored in the chemical bonds. So if there is a change in those chemical bonds, then there's gonna be a transfer of chemical energy. Elastic potential energy is something that is stretched or squashed. So stretched or squashed, we have elastic potential energy. And then thermal energy, uh, this links to P6 as well, which you'll revise next week, um, which is kinetic and potential energy, energies of the particles. So remembering, so basically that, uh, so P6, internal energy, just to link it back to the revision that you'll do in the future. Okay, uh, so you need to be able to identify when some of this energy is uh, is being transferred. Um, so let's think about, and then you need to be able to do calculations with it. So um, equations that you need to learn for kinetic energy. Uh, kinetic energy is equal to a half times mass times speed or velocity squared. So you need to learn this off by heart. Gravitational potential energy is mass times gravitational field strength times height. We could also write this as weight times height because we know that weight is equal to mass times gravitational field strength. So slightly different um, equation, but it links, links to this one. Um, the other equation that you you get given it, so actually let's do that in a different colour, elastic potential energy. You need to be able to use this equation, but you do get given it, you don't need to know it off by heart. So elastic potential energy is a half times the spring constant times uh, the extension squared. So you are given this equation, you don't need to learn it off by heart, you, but you do need to be able to use it and to rearrange it. Okay, so now let's think. We also have energy, we need to know about energy being transferred. And so how can the en these energies be transferred from one of these stores to another? So it could be transferred by mechanical work. It could be transferred by electrical work. It could be transferred by heating or by radiation. So let's think about what we mean by each of these. Mechanical work is force moving a distance. Electrical work, what we're talking about is a potential difference moving a charge. And again, you'll be revising that a different week. Uh, heating is fairly self-explanatory and radiation what we mean is waves and generally we're talking about light or we're talking about infrared so going back to our equation mechanical work you also need to know that work done is equal to force times distance 
and also that work done um, is uh, another way of saying that energy is transferred. So, but work done equals force times distance um, is an, another equation that you need to learn. While we're here, we might as well uh, discuss um, efficiency. Uh, so, when we talk about efficiency, we're talking about what proportion of the energy is usefully transferred. Usefully transferred. So when we're thinking about efficiency, what we're thinking about is it's going from what store to what store what is the useful store and where might it be wasted? So we always know sum is always wasted and it's always wasted by thermal energy um, and this is called dissipation. So it's never 100% efficient. Okay, so there's always some energy wasted either from friction or from uh, electrical resistance. Um, are, are two prime examples of that. So it's never going to be 100% efficient. So you need to think about what is the useful store. So the equation for efficiency, efficiency is the useful output divided by the total input. And the things that are useful to note about that, if they want a percentage, then you just do this times by 100. Okay, it's that simple. And also, the input and the output could be energy, or it could also be power. So you can work out the efficiency either by doing the useful energy output divided by the total energy input, or by doing the useful power output divided by the total power input. So let's have a go at this question. It's an example question um, to think about what, what we would need to do. So I've got my calculator at the ready um, and let's have a pen that we're going to use and a pen that we're going to annotate with. So first thing that we always do when we have a calculation question is to read the question carefully. As we're reading the question, you're going to highlight or underline or annotate with a colour that stands out. Okay, um, and this could be important data, it could be things that you are needing to calculate, any of that is, is going to be helpful. So, a child has a catapult with a ball in it. The elastic has a spring constant of 180 newtons per metre. So that's important, a spring constant of 180 newtons per meter and is pulled back 10 centimeters before letting go. What will be the speed of the 50 gram ball? Okay, so we're being asked to calculate the speed. So what is the speed? So let's write down some of the things that we know. The spring constant, so K, is 180 newtons per meter, pulled back 10 centimeters. So what we've got is we've got um, a catapult, so they usually look like a kind of Y shape. Okay, so it's pulled back, so it's extended 10 centimeters. So extension is 10 centimeters. Now some of you will spot that we don't do things in centimeters, so we need to convert it into meters. So 0 0.1 meters. So we've extended this uh, elastic back and then it's going to let go. So we, we've got elastic potential energy and this is going to convert into kinetic energy. So we've got elastic potential energy before, so when they've stretched the elastic, when they let go the ball is going to start moving and that's going to transfer into kinetic energy. So we've got a spring constant and we've got an extension. 
We've also got a mass, which is 50 grams. And again, we need to convert that because it needs to go into kilograms. So 50 divided by 1,000, 0 0.05 kilograms. So we need to work out how much energy there is to start off with. And we, so we have our elastic potential energy equation is elastic potential energy is a half times the spring constant times the extension squared. So 0 0.5 times K, which is 180 times 0 0.1 squared. So I just need to put that into my calculator. And that's 0 0.9 joules. Okay. So I've now got I've got 0 0.9 joules of elastic potential energy. Because we're assuming that all of it will convert into kinetic energy. We know that in real life that's not going to happen, but in physics calculations we do make that assumption that the, the elastic potential energy that the elastic band has on the catapult will be transferred entirely to the kinetic energy of the ball. Okay? If we didn't make that assumption, you wouldn't be able to do calculations like this. So we can then write out the kinetic energy equation, which you do need to memorise, a half times mass times speed squared. Okay, so... And then we're going to substitute and then rearrange. So kinetic energy is going to be what the elastic potential energy was before, so 0 0.9. And then we've got a half, which is 0 0.5, times the mass, 0 0.05, times V squared. So the easiest thing to do with this is to simplify this side first. So 0 0.9 equals, and then 0 0.5 times 0 0.05, 0 0.025 times v squared. So then we need to think, how do we get v squared by itself? At the moment, I've got v squared times 0 0.025. So I need to do the opposite of times 0 0.025, which would be divide by 0 0.025. If I do it to this side, I've got to do it to this side. So I'll have 0 0.9 over 0 0.025 will be equal to v squared. So we've got 36 is v squared. I don't want v squared, I want v, which means I need to uh, square root. And if I square root one side, I have to square root the other side. So the square root of 36 will be v, which is six meters per second.